Do you feel like your hands get tangled up as you play fills around the kit? Like you're not really in control, not really in command of what you're playing? Well, this is really just a lack of precision. And if you're dealing with this, today's lesson is definitely for you. The secret to professional drumming sound is precision. Hitting your drums in the right spot and at the right time. Without these two elements, you'll sound sloppy and amateur no matter what. But not to worry, because today I'm teaching you this weird paradiddle exercise that's kind of mind-bending, but also very simple at the same time, which will tighten up your ability to play fills around the kit smoothly and in time, sounding like a true pro on the drums, building a ton of precision. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out today. I help beginner self-taught drummers know what to practice so that they can nail songs and sound awesome playing with a band. I wanna help you become the drummer that others want to jam with so that you can have a lot of fun on the drums. After all, that's, that's what it's all about. Hey, while you're here, I have a free gift for you in the description below. If you've struggled with being able to play the ideas you hear in your head, it's probably because you don't have the four-way coordination yet that you need. And the thing about coordination is, with coordination, you can play anything, and everything's fun and easy on the drums. Without four-way coordination, everything is difficult, everything is tedious and a struggle, and it takes forever to learn new material. In other words, you've gotta build four-way coordination. Guess what, I have a free gift for you in the description that is your cheat for getting there much more quickly. It's my 30 days to four-way coordination e-guide. And what this is, is just a step-by-step -step practice this groove today. Practice this groove tomorrow, practice this groove the next day, and so on. One day at a time, one step at a time, it's all this nice, smooth, linear progression. Work through this and you will find yourself naturally building coordination while having a lot of fun learning cool rock grooves that you'll actually use in songs. And so that's a lot of fun. And what many of my students tell me is that by the time you get to day 12, 13, 14, 15, and that's where you see the big results from this. And so just stick with it, get through the sophomore slump of where things start to get challenging, get to day 15 and you'll find yourself growing a ton. And hey, if you make it all the way through 30, that's awesome. That's where you start to get to where you can play stuff that you hear in your head. So go grab that. That's gonna help you go further with what we're talking about in today's lesson. So let's dive into today's lesson. So you're struggling to feel control and in command as you play around the kit. Um, I remember being there where my fills weren't really intentional. I'd kind of get into something and then realize my hands are a little bit tangled up and they're not exactly going where I want them to. A lot of times it means that things aren't purposeful, things aren't impactful, things just don't sound professional and so as a result everything's kind of sloppy. And that's the way my playing was when I was in college. High school and college my playing was kind of a mess where I built up a lot of chops and could play a lot of cool sounding fast things. But I couldn't play the simple things well, and my hands just kind of got tangled up easily. And thankfully, a drumming mentor sat me down. This was toward the end of when I was in college. I was kind of, you know, transitioning into playing professionally, and I knew that I needed to improve in some certain areas. And thankfully, this this particular drumming mentor coached me for a, for a time. And he basically told me he told me a lot of things, but a big one was to focus on sound and precision. Focus on how you're actually sounding. What sounds are you getting from your drums? and work on being more precise in order to get those really good sounds. So what did that mean? What exactly does sound and precision mean? How do we build that? How do we gain that? Well, here's where we're going today. Kind of our big idea for today's lesson is you can play singles on the drum set, but orchestrate them as paradiddles to create a mind-bending precision-building exercise that improves your coordination and sound on the drums. If you're like, that sounds confusing and complicated. It's not, we're, I'm gonna teach it to you. It's gonna make a lot of sense. And then as we go through this, you'll start to understand, oh, okay, this is gonna help me out with this, which will help me out with this. There's a whole bunch of benefits you reap from this. So stay patient. We're going step by step here. What we're gonna do is we're going to play singles, but we're going to play singles that actually become paradiddles. <laughs> if that's not confusing enough, but like I said, it's simple. Step one. Step one is play paradiddles. Play paradiddles on your snare. This is the, the fundamental step one for you beginners. If you don't know what a paradiddle is, it's critical that you know that before we get going today. A paradiddle is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So we're just taking that first sticking of right, left, right, right, then we're inverting it to left, right, left, left for the second half. So if we play paradiddles on the snare, it sounds like this. Make sure you're comfortable with that sticking, whether you're just you know, tapping it on, tapping it on your knees as you follow along with me today. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. 
get comfortable with that so that it's autopilot so you can play it in your sleep. That is kind of the fundamental thing, but prerequisite thing, but I wanted to go ahead and make that step one in case you're a total beginner. Make sure you can play par standard paradiddles. But let's really get into the exercise and make things interesting here. Step two is play singles. So singles are just right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Simple building blocks of drumming. Play singles, but as a paradiddle orchestration between snare and rack tom. So what we're actually gonna do is this. Let me just play it for you and then I'll break it down a little more. Do you see what I'm doing there? So my sticking is staying right, left, right, left. I'm just playing singles, but I'm orchestrating my singles to become paradiddles between the rack tom and the snare. So that if you close your eyes and listen, it sounds like I'm just going. That sounds identical to what I played a minute ago, except the way we're choosing to play it, we're adding the challenge of playing sing a single sticking, but we're moving our arms to play paradiddles. So we're actually creating paradiddles between rack tom and snare. Here it goes slowly again, starting on the rack tom. Now the critical thing here is to go slowly because our whole goal here is to work on our sound and precision and get our hands and our arms to move exactly where we want them to on the kit without sloppiness. And this is such a great exercise for doing it because it honestly is a little bit mind bending. It's kind of challenging to be thinking singles with our hands, but thinking paradiddles with our arms and hearing paradiddles between drums while we're still playing singles. It's weird. Uh, I'm with you there, it's weird. But the weird challenging stuff that's also simple, those are the powerful exercises. So this is gonna help you a whole bunch, but you have to go slow, go very slow with this because our focus is on clean precision as you're playing, making sure you're hitting the center of each drum. So when you hit your rack tom, you don't have to hit the dead center and it'd be crazy to say like, all right, I gotta hit exactly in the center every time. When you look at my rack tom, you can see about a two inch radius of these dark marks. That's where I land most of the time. When I hit my rack time, I'm usually landing within this two inch circle in the middle and kind of the same, you don't really see it as much on my snare, but that's where you wanna be landing. So even if your sticks are you know, about right here, you actually get more resonance out of a tom by hitting slightly off center. And so you don't need to hit the dead center of the tom, you can hit a little bit off, which is nice if you're playing you know, singles on a tom. Same thing would apply to floor tom. So you're allowed to be a little bit off center, but pay attention to the sound you're getting out of those drums. And you can even sit here and go. Just hitting your drums, bare fundamental exercise of, of hitting things. But you know what? So many drummers skip over that step of, you know what? Where am I hitting my drum? Am I getting a good sound out of my drum? What do my drums actually sound like? It's always funny to me when, <laughs> If you ever been in a drum shop, you go to like Guitar Center or somewhere, and you're sitting there and you hear somebody shopping for, for drums and they're sitting down at different drum sets. And what do they do when they sit down at, at a drum set? They're like. <laughs> they sit down at the kit and they're like launching it all this fast up. And that's about what it sounds like, right? Where it's just a sloppy mess and it's like, how are you hearing what that drum set sounds like? You're just blazing around the kit trying to play as fast as you can to impress everybody in the shop. You always know a true professional drummer drum shopping by the way that they test out the kit. They'll sit down and they'll go. And they'll play things very slowly. so that they can actually hear the sounds the drums are making. And so many of us have skipped over that in our drumming journeys where we haven't paid attention to our sound. So that is really important and that's the biggest thing we wanna extract out of this exercise as we go very slow. Now also in the name of slow precision, if you wanna work on your snare sound, let's say you wanna practice hitting rim shots on your snare, cause that's a big part of, of rock playing, having consistent precise rim shots on your snare. And that was a big thing that that drumming mentor told me that I needed to work on, I was inconsistent with my back piece and I needed to get consistent with them. 
So something else you can do is decide, okay, here's how I'm gonna hit my snare in doing this exercise. Here's how I'm gonna hit my tom. I'm gonna hit my snare right here in the center, but I'm gonna make it a rim shot. So instead of hitting here, I'm gonna hit like this. Louder, right? It's gonna be louder hitting a rim shot because the shaft is also hitting the rim. So that's how I'm gonna hit my snare, but then I'm gonna hit the tom like right here, a little off center. And of course, not hit the rim of the tom. So you can decide that and now repeat the exercise going very slowly. I'm gonna put my in-ears in. It's always good to have ear protection when you're doing rim shots. And then something else you can do is move your right hand to the floor tom for an added variation. And so then it just becomes this. So all we've changed there is instead of hitting the, floor, the rack tom with our right hand, we're just hitting the floor tom instead. So it makes it a little more interesting. We still have paradiddles happening between toms as one unit and then snare as the other unit. So it's like the toms are the right hand part of the paradiddle, the snare is the left hand part. So you can see all the random stuff you can get into from there and that you improve at a lot as you practice this. And so here's what will happen as you work on this exercise, just going very slowly back and forth, you can gradually get faster as you get more comfortable with it. But your hands will become better coordinated because you're having to think about singles but moving your arms in a paradiddle fashion. So you're building so much coordination and brain connection between right hand and left hand. So your hands become much more well coordinated because of that whole, that weird moving in a paradiddle pattern, but yet you're playing singles. It's mind bending, but it builds your coordination so much and helps a lot with executing fills, moving around the kit intentionally, and your hands always going where you want them to go. You'll more easily be playing the ideas in your head. When you think of a fill idea of you'll much more easily be able to play it because of that better brain connection that you've established. And you'll be able to orchestrate more interesting fills without even changing the sticking. Because this is something that comes up a lot in these lessons uh, because it's a question I get from students of, if I want to play more interesting fills, shouldn't I be learning more interesting stickings? And the truth is, no, not really. You could learn more interesting stickings and play things like... You know, you can get the weird stuff like that, playing rudimental kinds of stickings. But for the most part, if we're talking rock drumming, really all of the fills that you're going to play can be played with singles. You don't need to switch up stickings. You can, but you don't really need to. If you stick with singles, everything's going to be a lot easier. And so in practicing this, you're practicing playing singles, but orchestrating things in different ways. And that's what you want to get comfortable doing, because if you can just play singles, that means you're establishing a pattern, which is easy to maintain and you don't have to think about, and you're just practicing moving your arms to different places and creating melodies on the toms, creating different impactful hits on cymbals without ever changing the actual right, left, right, left pattern. So you end up with stuff like I showed you just a minute ago where kind of the snare could be your base point, your starting point, and you end up being able to get all sorts of different sounds and melodies out of different parts of the kit.
And so you can move into playing things like that that are still just singles, but way more interesting than just being on the snare or just being on the time. You're able to reach over and hit other random things at random times to create interesting rhythms and melodies on the drum set. So question for you before you go, tell me in the comments, what do you feel like is your challenge that keeps your playing from sounding as professional as you want? Is it sound? Is it precision? Are you realizing, you know what, I'm not actually hitting the middle of my drums? When I'm playing really fast, am I just getting super sloppy? Because it's easy to get sloppy when playing fast. Do you need to just slow down and practice maneuvering around the kit slowly? So is it that sound, that precision thing? Odds are that's what it is. And as you're working on the fundamentals like hand technique and grip, and you're working on getting those things smooth, then that's going to help a lot with this. That's, a, that's definitely a fundamental prerequisite. Uh, but as you're applying to the kit, you wanna pay attention to where you're hitting. Is that your weakness? Is that your weak spot? Is that your main challenge? Just hitting the middle of the drums, because that's where I was. That's where I was back when, back when that drumming mentor sat me down and he was like, you need to focus on better sounds. <laughs> it's that simple. The drums, aren't, the drums are not the problem, you are. And that's what we have to face a lot of times. That's the painful truth that, you know, a lot of times it's not that your toms sound bad, it's that you're not hitting them well. It's not that your drum set is a cheap kit. Maybe it is but maybe you just haven't bettered your skill the way you should. And so as you improve your skill, you get to where you're able to make any drum set sound pretty good, even if it's a cheap kit. That's kind of a topic for another lesson, but that's what happens when you work on this stuff. You find that you build coordination, you can play the ideas in your head better, things are more smooth and professional and polished and precise and all those good things. So, hope this lesson's been helpful for you. I hope that this exercise is a lot of fun, even though it's kind of weird, uh, but it's, it's simple. Have a lot of fun practicing this and stay patient. As always, stay non-glamorous. You can do this. I'll see you on the next lesson.